Welcome again to a brand new series of tutorials here at uh, ediustips.com where we're going to take a look at Edius Pro version 8. We've just downloaded a brand new trial version from uh, the Grass Valley website and we're ready to get started. So we'll click on our icon over here and it's going to let us know that we've got 31 days left on our trial. Now the first time that you run Edius, it's going to ask you to choose a folder in which you want to save your projects. Let's hit browse and take a look at our options here. This is going to show you all the hard drives that are connected to your computer. Uh, if you don't see them right away, just click on this PC and it'll show you all the hard drives. I have quite a few connected to my desktop computer that we're using this time to uh, record these tutorials. Uh, rule of thumb is uh, the folder or the hard drive that you choose to uh, hold your projects should be at least something other than your C drive. Um, this will give you better performance if your projects are stored on a, a drive that's something other than your system drive. Don't worry, however, if you're trying to edit or checking out the program on a laptop and all you have is the, the one drive in your laptop, it will still work. Uh, and by placing your folder inside the C drive. But since we have lots of options here, let's choose another hard drive. Several things to keep in mind is, first of all, let's choose a hard drive that has a fast connection uh, to your system. For example, you may want to work with a hard drive that's directly connected uh, to your computer motherboard uh, with a fast interface. However, EDIUS also works very well with portable drives that may be connected to your computer. If possible, however, try and make sure that your portable drive is a USB 3 drive and that it's connected to a USB 3 connection. All right, and a third thing that you'll want to take into consideration is to make sure that whatever drive you choose has a fair amount of space left on it. You don't want to be putting your folders on a hard drive that is already in the red, for example. So we want to find uh, a hard drive that uh, has some space. Here's one here that has uh, almost 500 gigs left on it, so I think that's the one we'll work with. That's WVV02, so we'll look for that over here select that and let's make a new folder we already have a folder here it's called edius projects from our previous installation our edius 7 installation so i think we could probably just go ahead and select that but if you're working with edius for the very first time you'll probably have to use this button down here to make a new folder to create a, a, a unique folder you might want to call it edius projects or something similar to that Okay, so once you have a hard drive and a folder selected, let's hit the OK button. At this point, we'll choose a new project. Okay, this dialog box uh, is probably only going to show up the first time that you run EDIUS. And this dialog box allows you to tell EDIUS the types of video that you are normally working with, so it can create a number of presets for you to choose from. And this might make it a little bit easier for you to get started. So if you are working with 4K video, you want to check that. If you're working with HD video, you also want to check that. Uh, also, if you're still uh, occasionally working with SD video and you would like to have some presets for that show up, then you can check that. But just a word of caution, the more things you check here, the bigger your preset list is going to be. Okay, over here in frame rate, if you're kind of brand new to video, you might be wondering, well, what is a frame rate and, and which ones should I choose here? Well, if you are working in um, a country that is in the NTSC standard, which is US, Canada, Japan, and a few others, uh, you are more likely going to want to choose the 59.94i for interlaced and uh, perhaps the 59.94p for progressive and also the 29.97p for progressive. However, if you are uh, working with footage that was shot on a camera with presets that uh, are more lined up with the PAL TV standard, uh, and you're living in uh, a country that uses that and you want to edit in that, then you're most likely want to here going to choose 50i for interlaced, 50p, and 25p. There's one more box here that uh, 
some of you, uh, especially if you're a film major and uh, you're creating projects that are destined to be shown more as a film style rather than for broadcast or for internet use, you might want to choose the uh, 23.98 Progressive uh, to be included in your presets. I'm living in uh, Canada these days and most of my projects are NTSC. So I'm going to choose the frame rates that I'm most likely to work with based on the way I shoot and the camera settings that I have. However, just because we select these here does not necessarily mean that we're restricted to that. Each time you start a project, you will be given the option to choose a different setting. If you all of a sudden are, are given some footage that comes from a camera over in Europe somewhere and you're asked to edit uh, a project in the PAL standard, you can easily make that selection when you start a new project. Okay, one other option is 8-bit or 10-bit. And if you're not sure what to do here, just go ahead and, and click the 8-bit. If you know that you're shooting and all your footage has been shot in 10-bit on a camera that is capable of 10-bit, then you'll also want to select that or select that one instead of 8-bit. I um, am at the moment working only with 8-bit cameras still, so that's the one I'm going to choose. All right, to hit the next. It gives us a list of the presets that have been added. And so let's hit the completed. And now we have a nice list of presets that we can choose from each time we start a new project that can give us uh, the basic settings that we might be looking for as we work with a particular type of footage. However, we're not stuck with the settings that have been chosen by Grass Valley. As we click on each one of these, we'll see over here a list of the complete settings that have been selected for this preset by Grass Valley. And as you look down the list, if you see something that doesn't quite line up with the camera footage that you're going to be working with, well, you can just hit the Customize button, and it will take these settings to start with, and then you can make fine-tune adjustments. For example, a lot of my projects these days are uh, full HD, uh, coming from a Canon DSLR camera, uh, shooting at 29.97p. And as I look over here, I believe that uh, the settings are very close to what I would like. But even though we're fairly happy with that, let's hit the Customize button and uh, take a look and see what options are available to uh, make fine-tune adjustments to this. And as you look through these, you'll see that there are ways to make certain uh, fine-tune adjustments to the presets that have been chosen by Grass Valley for this setting. And even though I'm very happy with uh, everything that they have selected over here, I'm sure there's going to be some problems over here in the setup. And so let's take a look at some of these. I know, for example, that I prefer to have the render format at Grass Valley HQ Fine. I like my overscan size to be zero. I like my audio reference level to be more at 12. And uh, we can leave the resampling method at uh, fast and sharp, area average. The time code preset, I don't worry too much about that uh, these days. Uh, down here, looks like uh, even with version 8, uh, Grass Valley has chosen to keep the VA tracks. Most people don't use these anymore, most editors don't, so we'll set that to zero so we don't see any of those showing up when we start our project. Title tracks, we don't have that anymore, <laughs> and um, usually like to start with two audio tracks and that should probably give you a fairly nice start there. Let's hit OK. All right, here we are looking at the uh, user interface for the version 8 and I've been very curious to take a look at this because when version 8 was first released the uh, some of the older users were complaining vigorously about uh, how they hated the new interface. And they said it was very flat and the colors made it difficult to more difficult to read and, and work with. But I don't know, it looks fine to me. Uh, maybe they have uh, answered some of the complaints and uh, brightened up the contrast and color system a little bit uh, to appease some of the complaints. Uh, but as far as I can tell, it looks, looks great. Um, I 
see that some of the icons have changed a little bit and uh, what I'm going to probably do is uh, take a closer look at the interface and uh, try and determine what is new and uh, develop and record some tutorials that uh, will deal with some of the newer features. All right, well, I think that that does it for this uh, lesson. And in our next lesson, we'll uh, show you how to get started with the interface.